Today we are going to have a closer look at this thick thick boy. Today it's about the Scythe Mugen 5, or to be more precise, the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision C, not to be mistaken with Revision B or Revision A. And this is pretty important. Though there are an army of useless like revisions of various pieces of hardware out there, for the Mugen 5, the last revision was a significant change. The previous one used Scythe Case Flex 120mm fans, and those are now replaced with what looks like a Scythe Case Flex 120mm in black, but before you believe that the only difference between this and the revision B or whatever is just a few drops in color, this fan here has a slightly different fan blade design and it is spinning a lot faster. So for the rest of this Review, we are only talking about the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision C and only that one. Please keep that in mind in case you are questioning if the paint on yours has run out. So getting finally to the actual review. The Mugen 5C comes in the usual Scythe packaging, an all black box with some of that Japanese samurai stuff going on. Inside we'll find the usual box of goodies containing the installation hardware for AMD and Intel, a tube of thermal paste, an extra screwdriver and two sets of fan clips, one of which is for the included fan and the other one is in case you want to tune that thing with the second fan. Compatibility wise, the Mugen 5C was updated to keep up with the latest standards, while simultaneously also keeping the older ones, AM5, AM4, AM3 and so on for Team Red. On the blue side it's LGA 1700, 1200 every 1150 as well as 2066 and 2011. To get the cooler on top of your Intel CPU we need to take the provided backplate and position the screws on the side according to your socket. The most outer ones for LGA 1700 and the inner ones for everything else. After positioning the backplate behind your motherboard, we can install the spacers with those rubber sides facing down on top of the out sticking screw followed by the mounting brackets with that little indentation pointing inwards. Just make sure to use the right ones because there is a special LGA 1700 version included in the box. From there, just mount the whole thing down using the nut. Over on AMD's side, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and put the previously mentioned spacers with the rubber side on the bottom on there instead, and then followed by the retention brackets in an outward pointing position and screwing everything down. From there on both platforms just slap some of that thermal paste on top of your CPU, slap the heatsink on top of that and then screw it down. One screw visible from the side and the other one through the hole in the heatsink. And of course don't forget to put the fan back on. As you might have already seen, this thing is freaking huge. As far as single heatsinks go, this thing is a very interesting mix of being big and thick but still compact enough to not make it incompatible with too many other things. Size-wise, the closest comparison we've got is something like a Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3, but the Mugen 5C is a lot more compatible. With the fan installed, the Mugen 5 comes in a only 154.5mm height form factor, which makes it undoubtedly more compatible compared to a Shadow Rock. 155 is actually a, a pretty safe bet even for something like budget cases, but it doesn't end here. Although the heatsink including fan measures a whopping 110mm, the heatsink portion of the cooler is so much leaned back that the 25mm thick fan ends up being behind the first RAM slot, making this thing, although it is big, 100% RAM compatible. But it gets even better. Thanks to the 55mm high indentation on the back side of this cooler, this thing is also compatible with RAM slots on platforms that have slots on every side of the socket, like X299 for example. As far as compatibility goes, Scythe did a really really good job here. No RAM restrictions and they kept the thing low enough to make it fit into the average 30 euro case. But let's keep having a look at the heatsink. At the bottom we will find a pretty big copper nickel plated base with six heat pipes traveling up the pretty spaced out heatsink. The complete heatsink is uncolored and ends in a silver brushed aluminum type of color which just looks freaking amazing. At the top of the cooler we will find a stamped out scythe logo with the ends of each heat pipe sticking out significantly more than you might expect. Now well, honestly I, I don't know why they put these on but uh, or it has like any mechanical necessity to be on there, but it looks, it looks pretty 
pretty raw. The fan in the front would be the biggest change compared to the previous revision. Now it's all black and has a slightly changed up fan blade design, a bit more pointy to be exact, and it is spinning at up to 1500 rpm while pushing 67 CFM at 1.5 mm of H2O and being controllable over a 4 pin PVM connection. A pretty significant upgrade compared to the last version. Maybe this will not be the case anymore when this video is published, but everywhere on the box in the manual, I mean everywhere, the fan is, is just referred as being a Case Flex 2. Unfortunately, I just can't find anything about a Flex 2 online. So we can all just take a not so wild guess that there is something coming out of House Scythe in the very near future. Okay, with everything about this big thick boy covered, Let's go to the benchmark. We tested it on top of our usual test bench and letting the fan spin at 100% of its max speed, the Mugen 5 managed to keep the CPU at 54 degrees C above ambient. And this puts it into the same category as the slightly bigger Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 and for example, an Arctic A35. Very interesting to note here is how close it ended up being compared to the much bigger and dual heatsink Scythe Fuma 2, with only a degree difference, which is a very interesting result. All in all, the Mugen 5 landed somewhat in the center of all of the coolers, but if you only take into account single fan and single tower coolers, it's actually among the very best. The only thing that is above it are things like the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports, which is about 3mm higher, or the Noctua NHU12A, which is 4mm higher, and probably they did some voodoo stuff to make it as good as it is. Over on the noise to performance side, we were able to observe that the Mugen 5 is best in its efficiency at lower RPM numbers. Whilst comparing it to a bunch of comparable coolers, it started off a bit behind all of them, but then immediately dropped down, performing similarly to a Freezer 34 Esports, and then outperforming it, the Noxia D12L, the Fuma 2, the Freezer A35. That's a very long list. Actually, it even ended up outperforming the Be Quiet Shadow Rock once you'll keep the RPM number low enough. As a very special comparison, we wanted to see how it performs against Scythe's own Fuma 2. As it turns out, the only benefit that the Fuma 2 has is at max fan speed. There, the two fans and two heatsinks are able to get the temp a tiny bit lower, but therefore also a bit louder. But once you turn down the fan speed even slightly, the Mugen 5 takes the lead and completely annihilates the crap out of the Fuma 2. And can we just take a second and admire the beautiful and perfectly bent curve that the Mugen 5 produces. I, I have never seen my graphs being so perfectly bent. I, I love this one. So where does all of this leave us? Design-wise, I'm a huge fan. I might not be all for the new black case flex 2 fan because I kind of like the older, older thing, but I am definitely all for the big aluminum brushed heatsink with those unnecessary big knobs on top. It just looks nice. But, you know, you have to see for yourself. Performance-wise, the Mugen 5C might not be the benchmark topper, but once the efficiency kicks in, it manages to catch up and even outperforms other major players like the Shadow Rock 3 or all of the Arctic air coolers. And don't forget that Scythe's Case Flex fans are the first fans that actually manage to get the noise as low as Be Quiet Silent Week. This is basically the minimum that my DB meter can catch. But one of the biggest advantages, in my opinion, is compatibility. RAM-wise, it's 100% by design, but compared to every other cooler on the list, the Mugen 5 is the smallest. Everything on here, it's either three, four, or five millimeters smaller, and that's a huge advantage, and it makes the performance even more impressive. Except for the Noxia D12L, which is 145 millimeters, but that one it doesn't count, it has two heat sinks, so it doesn't count. So performance-wise, I believe this is very impressive for how the cooler is built. You can slap this thing into almost any case, and that's definitely not always given. So for anybody who's looking to cool down a C CPU like a 12700K or maybe even 1500X if you have a good, good case or anything below, we can definitely recommend the Mugen 5C, especially because price-wise this thing is going for around 55 euros or 55 dollars. And considering the performance and build quality, because yes, this thing is not only thick but it is also pretty much 
indestructible, and I'm hurting my hand with this, overall it's a very good deal. As a last mini point before we end this, the bottom mounting bridge that is meant to keep the whole thing attached to the mounting hardware on the motherboard side, because once you install it, is permanently attached to the base and has two spring screws that cannot fall out. Very easy to install, it is not a hassle at all, and this, keep this up, keep that thing forever, Scythe. You did a very good job with how these coolers are installed. But okay, this should be it for the Scythe Mugen 5 Ref C. At this point, a huge thank you to Scythe for sending it over, and the Fuma 2, of course, and yes, there will also be a closer look review at that one in the near future. But until then, have a look on our take on the Scythe Shuriken 2. It is one of the best Ultra SFF coolers we have seen until now. On a side note, we also have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your sword for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a lawyer and get me out of my contract with whatever this is. I, I thought I was buying another Mugen Air cooler, but apparently I'm now getting a tuned Honda? Oops. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.